Hey everybody, Dr. Joel Parker and this is Whiteboard Wednesday. This week we're talking about an interesting subject, interesting subject that has to do almost with how uh, uh, pilots fly planes on instruments. I've entitled it, how is your practice's instrument rating? Meaning, how well are you flying off of your statistics, your metrics, and really examining what the key performance indicators, your KPIs are of your practice. For those of you that follow those, you know that they tell an interesting story. It's like looking at a blood glucose graph on a diabetic cat that you're using insulin at various doses, various types of insulin, various times of the day and so forth to start to get an idea of getting the diabetic cat under control. Well the same thing that happens with your practice. When you start to examine what your KPIs are, your key performance indicators, when you start looking at what those are and you graph them out, they start to tell a story and they start to bring your attention onto certain areas of the practice. I don't know if you've experienced this before, but I used to have times in practice where I'd be swamp and busy, you know, getting home at 8 o'clock and so forth and handling all this stuff and then I'd look at what happened. At the, at the week ending and there'd be kind of a marginal amount of gross income that came in. It actually wasn't that a good of a week. So there, on the other hand, there can be a week where things just run absolutely smoothly. You know the weeks I'm talking about when you've got your best staff on and they're just gelled together as a team. You know the front works with the back, the back works with the front. Everything just fits together and everybody's home, uh, everybody's out of there at six o'clock and you look back on the week and it's been a phenomenally productive week. So would you agree that there can be a discrepancy between what your perceptions are as to how busy a practice is and actually how busy it is. And so to get rid of those perceptions, we start tracking your KPIs. Okay, we start looking at that. Now, I've mentioned monitoring a diabetic cat and so forth. Now, pilots also, when they fly planes, they get what's called an instrument rating, so they can fly by instruments. And that means looking at all your guidance equipment and so forth and navigating off the stars and so forth. They're actually controlling the aircraft by looking at instruments. They know based on what the instruments are doing, what levers they should push, altitudes they should go on, on what directional coordinates they should shift on to in order to fly the plane successfully. I want you guys to now jump over to thinking about that with your practice. You know, looking at various values, for example, what can you start to monitor in order to get in the game of tracking your practice? So the first step here is on your action, action steps, what can be measured? Well, almost everything can be measured, but if you look at what goes on in your practice, there's certain things that are more tangible than others. The question I get asked a lot is that how do you monitor a receptionist uh, performance? You know, how do you monitor a technician's performance? And some of those things can be rather difficult to measure. But let's focus on some real simple ones for you. I want to start talking about what we call here at VPS the basic quad. Now, a basic quad of uh, measurable indices to track are number one, new clients up here. I call this a quad. Over here is transactions. These would be the, the actual number of invoices. Down here we've got what's called your average client transaction, which is the amount of money the, of every transaction that goes out, and that is influenced by the veterinarians, what we prescribe for treatment plans and medical care plans, how good we are at working with clients, objections to spending money on their pets and things like that. So the average client transaction is one that can be influenced. If you've got multiple doctors, I recommend you track it because you'll find right away that there are some doctors that are extremely good at you know, charging well and building up good cases and other ones are not. You begin to sort out who's who in your practice. And then finally over here in the bottom right of the quad here, I've got, you know, the amount that's actually invoiced. We call that your value of service delivered. That's the amount that you stream into your estimates that get converted into actual invoices and track that. So let's look at my example here. Let's say that if you look here, you know, we've got the new clients that are crashing down. We've got the transactions that are going sideways. The average client transaction is going up. And here we've got the amount invoiced that's going Going up. So you get a load of this. You could have a week where the invoice actually went up, but when you examine it, you realize that that came from a nice rising average client transaction, which is good, and you want to support that. But when you look at the transactions, they're flat, and then here's this crashing new clients graph. So in terms of how you're managing your practice and creating like your treatment plan, your medical care plan, or what we call your battle plan for your practice, your management plan, we would want to certainly support the areas that are up. We'd want to put some attention on the transactions. Are the receptionists answering the phone? Are they asking, are they, are they offering an appointment? Are they filling up the appointment book? Things like that, simple things. And also over here are new clients. You know, how are we getting new clients? We've got, you know, you can see here that there's a, there's a long downward trend. So in that case, something would need to be done. Okay, everybody. So this is just a, 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 an example of creating a management uh, instrument uh, panel, your basic quad. You could also call this a practice management dashboard, for example, that allows you to see what's going on in the practice. The old story is if you can measure it, you can change it. If you can track it, you can change it is true here. What you put your attention on, you'll find that things will start to change for the better. 
Okay, and if you've signed up for one of the famous VPS workshops, either the online practice profit builder, the online new client builder, or the power team builder, this includes a four to six hour very detailed functional practice analysis. What we do with that is that we examine this data. Now we examined this quad of data for 32 months and in order to get that done properly so we can really show you what's going on in your practice. It's an awesome service that we offer, but in order to do that, we need you to get your data out. I'd like to introduce you now to Lindsay Scott, our Director of Public Service, who we'll be talking to on the phone about the data. Lindsay, come on in. This is Lindsay. Hi. <laughs> and so Lindsay's going to be working with you to get data, uh, and the sooner you get us the data, the sooner you can get it graphed out and get ready for your functional practice analysis. Okay, guys, that's all we got this week. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Uh, please uh, subscribe down below, tell your friends about it, and we'd love to get some comments from you. Thanks a lot, guys. See you next week.